In 1990, Danahuff's band Giant came to the UK to promote the release of their debut album, The Last of the Runaways. They perform almost exclusively tracks from this record, with the exception of one cover, which was Doctor Doctor, originally by Moon Martin, but made more famous by Robert Palmer. And incredibly, this performance was pro shot and is available to view on YouTube. The footage truly shows the guys at their best. Not only is the playing superb across the board, but the tracks have been performed in their original keys. So vocally, this is no mean feat, but Dan does an amazing job. Also, if you didn't already want a yellow Dan Huff Tyler, you sure as hell will after watching this video, so be warned. The only anomaly with this footage is that in certain key areas, you can hear that there has been audio overdubbed after the event. Now, sometimes this is quite funny because, for example, in this clip, We can see that Dan is down here somewhere and the note we're hearing is up here somewhere. Um, so there's a couple of kind of funny moments, but the one that really caught my attention was the lick that I played in the intro. Now this happens right towards the very end of the show. It's in the last few moments of I'm a Believer. Uh, Dan starts his solo. It's kind of a little bit low in the mix, so it's not super easy to hear exactly what's going on and then clear as day this blinding lick comes in uh, and totally steals the show so i don't know why this was overdubbed it could have been a technical malfunction it could have been that dan wasn't happy with the clarity of what was captured on the night or it could have been that he wanted to replace a part who knows what do you guys think? I find it hard to imagine Dan making mistakes generally, so that could have been the case, but who knows? Anyway, it's kind of hard to imagine that whatever was there originally was cooler than what was overdubbed because it is a blazing lick. It really sounds great. And that's what I wanted to do this video on. <laughs> like the tablature and the standard notation for this deck you can check out the session heroes patreon page any of you who've been watching my channel for a while will notice that i don't have adverts on any of my videos i turn them all off i demonetize everything like on youtube apart from the stuff which i can't demonetize that has some original audio in this is really just to try and make your experience more enjoyable and make this a kind of calm place where you're not being overwhelmed with stimuli and being advertised at um, so what I do instead is have my Patreon page, which allows you guys to support me in making these videos, but you also get stuff back. So you get transcriptions for any of the Huff, Landau, Lukather, etc. videos I transcribe, as well as Top Draw Licks, which is ideas that I'm working on in my own practice routine, which I will notate and stick up. You also get access to the backing tracks that I make for these videos. I make backing tracks so that I don't get copyright infringement and then have my videos monetized by the labels. So again, keeping things nice and clean. So before we get into the lick itself, let's talk about context for a moment. At this point in the song, we are hearing mostly fifths or power chords. We have G5, E flat five, C5, B flat five, and F5. Now this is problematic from an analysis perspective because of the absence of thirds. When we can hear the thirds within chords, it makes it easier to analyze their relationship and determine which parent or umbrella key they're coming from. Personally, I would interpret this as mostly being in the umbrella key of F major, but with E flat being borrowed. However, it is open to debate and Dan doesn't help us with this because he avoids certain intervals that would give us more of a clue like the sixth, for example. So as it stands, you could use this lick over a G Dorian context or over a G Aeolian context equally well. Now let's get into the lick itself. We are situated at the 10th fret of the A string. We're starting on the root of our tonal center, which in this case is that G5 chord. And we start with 
this pattern, which is simply the 10th, 12th, and 13th fret of the A played twice, root, major second, minor third. We then walk up the minor pentatonic scale. And again, we double back on ourselves. So we're taking the 10th and 12th fret of the D and the G respectively, and we play that twice. So we have. Up until this point, everything has been alternate pick, but now we have to pay a little bit more attention. So when we get to the B string and we take the 10th and 11th fret, we're going to pick the 10th, pick the 11th, and then pull off back to the 10th. When we move to the G string, we're gonna do a similar thing. So we pick the 12th fret of the G, pick the 10th, and then hammer back up to the 12th. That little mechanic will help you deal with an awkward part in the lick a lot easier than if you were trying to alternate pick it. And listening to it, I don't think that Dan is alternate picking it anyway. I think this is what he's doing. At this point, we retrace our steps. So we take the 10th and the 11th fret of the B. And then we're up on the high E string, 10th fret, 13, pulling back off to the 10th. And once again, we see our classic Dan Huff picking mechanic where we move to the B string, we take the 13th, pick, 11th, pick, pull off to 10. Okay, we've used that loads and here it is again. We continue descending and we take the 12th and 10th fret of the G. And then once again, we retrace our steps. Now this time, we are extending the phrase a little bit. So we take 13 on the B, 11, 10, 11, 10. Now there's different ways we could do this. I have a feeling that when I did it, it was all as hammer-ons and pull-offs, but you could do any combination of the following. All hammer-ons and pull-offs, or we could have uh, the first three notes pulled off and then re-strike, or we could have the kind of pick-pick pull-off thing. Personally, I think I'm leaning more towards the legato approach. Um, I'm not saying that how I'm doing it is exactly how Dan did it, but having transcribed some other Dan stuff and seeing some of the patterns and also listening to it, I think this is pretty close. From this point, it's plain sailing because we're just going down a minor pentatonic scale, which you could do as all picked, or you could do a mixture of picked and pull-offs. It's gonna just be a case of what sounds best to your ears and what is more effective from a technique perspective. Now, my advice with practicing this is take it slow, really slow. Um, there are a couple of bits that are quite tricky and you need to program your right hand to deal with the mechanics of it and to get it kind of set in your muscle memory before you even start trying to speed things up. So I spent a long time <laughs> practicing it super, super slow until it started to become automatic. When you're dealing with something this fast, you can't process all the information in real time once you bring it up to speed. So you have to teach your hands the correct way of doing it and then just kind of trust them as you start to ramp up the tempo. Okay, folks, that is it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and this video. I strongly urge you to go and check out the Giant Live in London video if you haven't already. If you're new here, please subscribe for more dorky and very niche content just like this and like these videos to help me with the algorithm nonsense. Okay guys, have a good couple of weeks and I will see you for more of the same real soon. Take it easy. Bye.